Hi there, uh, I thought I'd do a quick demo on a new facility that's available in Fort, uh, Fairbot that was released uh, this week uh, and that is the automation of strategies uh, and rules and conditions that work with those strategies to allow you to essentially set and leave your betting. Um, you can access the facility via the automation tab on the right hand side here and by clicking on the strategy editor button or you can go up to the tools command and choose strategy editor. Now you see I've already got a couple of uh, strategies set up but what we'll do is I'll, I'll do one from scratch, a very basic one where I'm going to lay the favourite. So we create a new one, rename it and we'll just call it lay fave IR. So what I'm going to do is look for whenever a runner hits a certain odds in running and then l immediately lay it at slightly lower odds. So we specify a name for our new strategy, right click over here and add a rule. This is going to be a, a very simple rule. Uh, so we're just going to keep it the same name, lay fave, but keep in mind that you can add any number of rules to the same strategy. Uh, with each rule doing different things based on the previous rule that was implemented. So for the purposes of this exercise I'm going to lay the fave and I'm going to lay the fave uh, this rule will kick in relative to the in play time so it's going to kick in uh, zero seconds from in play. I can ask it to stop running this rule so I could specify just run this rule for X number of minutes or relevant to the event start time or whatever but I'm just going to want this to carry on running. I can also specify for this rule to be executed any number of times. I'm only wanting it to happen once. I only want to lay the favourite once. Uh, which means that this section here is irrelevant. Uh, that specifies the number of, se in this case, seconds to wait between each execution, depending on what that count number is. So this particular rule will fire once, and what I want it to do is I want it to place a bet, I want to bet on the favourite, keep in mind that by position is different from by bet fair row. By bet fair row refers to its position within the grid, whereas what I want to do is actually the current favourite based on the current range of back odds. So I want to set that to one to consider the favourite. I want to place a lay bet at fixed price, although note you can also uh, do it relative to best back price or best lay price. I'm going to do a fixed price and I'm going to specify to put in a lay at odds of 1.9. I'm going to specify odds of 50 uh, and the stake is a liability rather than actual stake. You'll also notice I can specify a filler kill in here. Um, there's no need to set this because this rule won't kick in until the event goes in play. I want to set conditions however. I don't know which horse will be the favourite at any particular point in the race so what I'm going to say is that the first runner to be favourite which hits odds of less than or equal to 3.5 this bet will fire. So whatever horse is first to hit 3.5 in running, a lay bet will be placed on that horse at odds of 1.9. So we click on OK and there's our bet specified. Now, I've just made this strategy up. I have absolutely no idea if this will work. So, you know, don't think this is a successful strategy. I have no idea. OK, we save that and then we can come out of the strategy editor. We can now assign it to this race and we're just in time for this race so let's uh, click up here and choose lay fave IR. So that has now been assigned to this particular race. Also whenever you do that it gets added to the watch list. 
so we can actually assign things in here by say for example choosing the next couple of races and adding those manually to the watch list and so now I can select those races and assign the same strategy to it or any other strategy that I have done in the past. So we'll use uh, those ones and hopefully I'll let you see those in action as well. Okay, so we can shut that down. We now wait for this uh, race to to get going and you'll see that oh, I'm on the wrong race. There we go. We can see that uh, the race is, is about to start. Um, let me just pause the video until it gets going. Uh, rather than wait for them to, on the other hand, <laughs> they were particularly quick for a change. Okay, so we just sit and wait for the odds of one of these horses to hit 3.5. Once that gets triggered, that executed 0 slash 1 will change to 1 slash 1. And also in the, the bets option, you'll have a bet being placed here. You'll also notice that the horse name is changing. That's because the current favourite is changing, as indicated by this one here. Now that one has been hit. So if we go back to the bets, you'll see that a lay bet has been placed on Bahango. It's then drifted out before the 1.9 was reached, and consequently we didn't have a bet matched in the market. And that's fine purpose of that exercise of course was to actually let you see the thing in action. Now if we move to the next race we'll see we have this particular this different strategy assigned. Let me just run through what this strategy does. It looks for races where the number of runners is between 6 and 10 inclusive. It also looks for races, if I just pull that across a bit, where the favourite odds on the favourite are less than 4. I'm referring to the back odds here. So assuming those conditions are met, the system will, from 10 seconds before the schedule off, will place a Dutch bet for the value of £50 on the third and fourth favourite. So in this particular case, uh, the number of runners conditions is met, the odds on the favourite conditions is met, so with 10 seconds to go, we would end up with a Dutch between these two, based on the odds as they are at the moment. Once that Dutch has been placed, the strategy sits and waits for the race to go in running, um, and it will then either green up all, if the profit on, the, on all selections together, i.e. the profit for the market, hits 10, it will green up all, if, however, the profit in the market hits minus 25, the other ones were 25 pounds in the red, it will red up all instead. Okay, I'm not saying that this market or this strategy works. Again, it's just something I set up earlier on uh, yesterday whilst I was testing this new feature. Uh, again, you'll see that I'm doing everything in simulation mode, so the, the matching process behaves subtly differently to, to the real life, but um, it's worthwhile doing that just to make sure you understand the settings and the behaviour of the strategy editor and how the rules are implemented uh, when you're looking at real markets. Now, while we're also waiting on this, clearly within the market watch list, although I'm concentrating on horse racing, you can have any kind of market in here, any sport uh, and any valid Betfair market. If you've got a successful strategy, you can implement it using Fairbot. And so you could build up all your, your uh, events, all your markets and strategies at the beginning of the day, set Fairbot off to monitor those markets, leave it running and you can go off to work or play golf or whatever you want to do and let Fairbot get on with it. Okay, what I'm going to do is, since there's five minutes before the start of this race, I'll pause the video and we'll come back nearly off. Okay, we're coming up to the start of this uh, 3.20 at Cartmel. 
the <coughs> all the conditions are met so we should see that this gets executed uh, 10 seconds before the off we're still looking at these two being the third and fourth favorites uh, again I should emphasize that uh, this isn't a strategy I use on a regular basis uh, it's just purely been set up as part of the process of examining the automation facilities that have been introduced into Fairbot. Um, so there you go, uh, we see that that first part of this strategy has been executed. It's uh, found the third and fourth favourite and placed a Dutch on them, uh, £50 liability to win 115 Of course, uh, we're not going to let this run through its to conclusion. Uh, we'll be greening up or reading up depending on how the market goes with these two runners. Given that this is a two mile race, um, it's also going to take four minutes or so, but I'll pause the video until we get off and running. Alright, you can see there's a nine minute delay so far at this race, so I'll switch to the next one. Uh, they're currently loading. I've got the same strategy assigned to it. Uh, hopefully that will get off very quickly. Uh, there's the bets just been placed in there. So we have a Dutch on these two, third and fourth favourites, £50 liability to win 109 but we of course will trade out once the race gets going. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause the video again and wait for one of these races to actually start. Okay, that didn't take too long. Um, so they're off and running. If this hits 10, the, the green up all rule will trigger. If it drops down to minus 25, the red up all will trigger. So just a case of waiting and see. Shouldn't be too long. It's only a mile and a half. The, this facility, I'm not sure if it's something that I would actually use simply because of the style of trading that I do, but certainly uh, if you're familiar with my other videos, I do tend to trade uh, Dutched races. Um, and certainly there's a, a case for setting up a rule that will automatically trade out of the Dutch. Um, you'll see here this, this the green up uh, all button. Um, can change quite rapidly um, and it's not it wouldn't be the first time where it's gone to green and I've tried to click on it um, and it's changed in between me registering that it's green and me actually clicking on the mouse my reaction times aren't fast enough for it to actually catch that green and so when you think you're trading out for a green and you find yourself with, with a red then you'll see here um, that the red up all option has triggered. So we've traded out these guys, these two runners weren't running particularly well, so we've traded out for a guaranteed loss near enough unless uh, in Vino Veritas turns things around pretty rapidly. Okay, let's switch back to the other one to see if it's on the go yet. So we've still got a 12 minute delay. Again, I'll pause the video, come back to this one and see this one in action, and then we'll finish things off. Uh, I think I've just missed it. I switched back to this Thursk race um, because Rochambeau came in quite quickly. So there was a chance, well, you can't see it from the graph, there was a chance that if I hadn't had that trade out option, that red all option, I may well have hit uh, the green, which is one of the reasons, as I alluded to earlier, I tend not to trade out for a guaranteed loss when I'm doing things in running, because the amount of times I've done that only for my selections to go on and win or come pretty damn close to winning, vastly outweighs the, the losses I would have accrued if I'd let things go. Anyway, let's go back to the race. Okay, we're off and running now. Uh, so we'll just watch this race, see if what gets taken. 
and then uh, <coughs> that will do us for today. But essentially, as you can see, um, if you do have successful strategies, and particularly if you uh, lead a busy life elsewhere, it's perfectly feasible to set up those strategies within Fairbot, set them up in the morning, leave your computer on, let Fairbot get on with its thing during the day, and you can go off to work or do whatever it is that you, you need to do. Um, it could also be, from what I've seen so far over the past couple of days, it may well be a very useful tool for trying out some strategies to see if they actually work. Whether you actually go on to do them automatically or manually trade those strategies is, a, you know, is irrelevant. It, it provides an automated feature, an automated mechanism whereby you can test strategies without actually having to sit at the computer all the time. Uh, so from that point of view, uh, you may find it quite useful as well. Okay, we're just sitting, we're not even halfway around this race yet, so it may be a little while for, for these things to come down, if indeed they do come down. We've hit 10. There's our bets being placed in. So we're guaranteed a green now. We've still got a little bit left on Society Man still. If that gets taken, things should balance up a little. There we go. So there's our £10 profit. And that's that strategy in a nutshell. Keep in mind that um, you know, essentially randomly picking the third and fourth favourite without any regard to the horse's form, performance, past results ability to shorten in price and running and so on and so forth is not necessarily a strategy I would implement but it serves a purpose in terms of uh, demonstrating the automation feature. Okay, thanks very much for watching.